Well, there you are. And here are we. The North Koreans are at it again. The communist nation today test fired four more missiles just days after a report that the U.S. has been waging a cyber war to sabotage the North's missile capabilities. We're told the missiles launched on the country's west coast and crashed into the Sea of Japan. Fortunately, Fox News has learned that they were just old scuds and not the kind of missiles that can carry a nuke a long, long way. But, as you may have noticed, the North Koreans have been acting even less predictably than usual. More weapons tests, more uh, showboating, and, as you know, Kim Jong-un's half-brother assassinated. So, is this just some standard muscle flexing, or are things spiraling out of control? And the region, Gordon Chang joins me, a Daily Beast columnist and author of Nuclear Showdown, North Korea Takes on the World. Um, so uh, there was some chatter that this was just a reaction to a joint military exercise that the U.S. was conducting with South Korea. Is that all there is to it? Well, there are always North Korean provocations this time of year because of the key resolve and foul eagle exercises. But we've got to remember that this is a very sensitive time for the regime. You know, last month there was so much evidence of instability. We had the Minister of State Security was demoted. Five of his subordinates were executed by aircraft fire. Wow. On the 12th, which was the day of the launch of the intermediate range missile, mm -hmm. um, the head of North Korea's strategic rocket forces was not present, indicating real troubles at the top of the North Korean military. And then, as you mentioned, on the 13th, the day afterwards, there was the assassination of Kim Jong Nam. Yeah. So, this is a regime which is really in flux right now. And so, you know, any sort of thing can sort of set it off. Yeah, that, that's true. And China has always been North Korea's shield for the rest of the world, particularly with the United States. But it seems like China's had it with them as well. Well, I, you know, the Chinese are frustrated, and, and they especially don't like what a, they consider a vassal disrespecting them in public, which is what happened on Kim Jong Nam, because Kim Jong Nam was protected by China. China was thinking of holding him in reserve in case they needed a new Kim to rule Pyongyang. So the Chinese didn't like that. But, you know, the Chinese support North Korea, not because the North Koreans are friendly, but because the North Koreans accomplished some very important goals for Beijing. Yeah. Like, for instance, is keeping us off balance every time they do something provocative. You know, we send our Secretary of State to Beijing and plead for them for their cooperation, and they get sort of um, concessions out of us for this from us. And also, you know, that just distracts us from things that are more important, like the South China Sea. Yeah, but the, China was having an ex exhibition of their National People's Congress, right. which is the, their big show of, of communist strength. Right. And at the same time, that's happening. Yeah. And, you know, they're showing the world and uh, people within China. North Korea is doing ballistic missile testing. Yeah, well, the Chinese don't like that because what they've got now is the National People's Congress meeting, and, and that is an important um, way station to the 19th Party Congress at the end of the year when Xi Jinping, the Chinese ruler, wants to consolidate his position. He wants a nice, quiet couple weeks right now, yeah. and he's not getting it. No, he's, uh, he's certainly not from North Korea. So what, what happens? What does the U.S. ultimately do? Does this bring the U.S. and China closer together? Um, you know, one of, the, uh, one of the choices that this administration can make is some sort of military strike against North Korea, but that seems like a really bad idea. No, that's a really bad idea because the North Koreans, even without their weapons of mass destruction, could unleash holy hell on the South Koreans yeah. in a general conflagration. I think what the United States needs to do is try the one approach that we have not employed over the last couple of decades, because we've done everything and everything has failed. Yeah. Only one thing we haven't done, and that is to start imposing costs on China for supporting North Korea's ballistic missiles program, its nuclear weapons program, and all sorts of illicit commerce. Yeah. So if we were to do that, we would show Beijing that we were serious about protecting our own homeland, and we haven't been that no, way for we, a we've, long time. There have been sanctions on North Korea, but you're saying the targeted yeah. sanctions on China would be more effective and smoke North Korea out. Oh, absolutely, because, you know, Beijing right now has an economy that's not doing very well. We could push it over the edge. Not saying we should do it, but nonetheless, we can get China's cooperation. I think that if we have a much tougher approach. If we unplug their banks from the global financial system, yeah, the markets would yelp, but nonetheless, China would realize that we were actually meant, meant business about North Korea. All right, well, we will see what happens. Uh, there are some saying this is the greatest threat to this administration and to the United States. Hopefully, that's not the case. We will see Gordon Tran. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kennedy. Great. All right.